All righty. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for, for joining us today. We're probably going to see people continue to pour in here for, uh, for the next minute or two. So, um, but thank you all for, for joining, those of you who are on already. Uh, my name is actually Mitch Larson. I am not uh, Louis Nichols, uh, whose name is on this account. So, uh, you know, just ignore that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about how to use paid social to grow your newsletter audience. And so um, obviously, uh, you know, I'm with Sparkloop. Um, many of you are already familiar with Sparkloop, what Sparkloop does. If you're not, uh, we are a newsletter growth uh, tool, allows you to run uh, referral programs, uh, partner programs, you know, paying for, for promotions in other newsletters uh, and things of that nature. Um, so would love to certainly talk to you about using Sparkloop. If you don't use that already, if that's not already part of your newsletter growth um, sort of stack, we would certainly love to help you out with that. We've got some resources that uh, that our moderator, Emily, can share with you uh, in, in, the, uh, in the side here in the handouts thing. We've got a referral reward cheat sheet, which can help you to kind of decide what sort of rewards might work well um, for a uh, for your newsletter referral um, system, um, as well as a uh, calculator tool that can help you to calculate your subscriber lifetime value. Uh, that can be helpful as well when you are designing a referral program, um, making sure that you the the incentives that you're handing out to your audience uh, align with an appropriate you know, customer or uh, subscriber acquisition cost and all of that. So those are the types of things that we offer and we're happy to offer those, uh, those free handouts that can be useful for that. Um, but also, as I said, would love to, to talk to anybody about getting set up on our platform uh, for their newsletter growth, if you'd be interested. But that is not the topic of today. Uh, the topic of today is uh, paid growth uh, via social media platforms, primarily Facebook and TikTok. And for that, we've brought in the expert, uh, Matt McGarry, uh, who just left the hustle uh, earlier this year uh, to do this independently and help newsletters grow um, through those platforms. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Matt to go ahead and uh, tell us about himself and get into the, to the meat of the presentation. So thank you, Matt, for being here. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Cool. Well, first off, I'm a little bit sick, so apologies if I like pause and cough or sneeze for a second. But I have some stuff I want to cover about Facebook and TikTok ads. Um, and let me hop into that now. Let me share my screen here. And if you could just in the chat, um, let me know if you can see that. I think I think I got that all set up correctly. Um, let's see here. Cool. So let me just go back to the chat and confirm. You can actually see my screen. One second, perfect, okay, cool. All right, let's get into this stuff. Um, we're gonna cover how to grow your newsletter with Facebook and TikTok ads. Um, and we're gonna be covering how your newsletter, um, how newsletters should set up Facebook and TikTok ads, your eight types of Facebook creatives you can set up in a short amount of time, how to manage and optimize and scale your Facebook and TikTok ads. And um, what's really important for TikTok ads is how to find creators and actors to make videos for your ads and other stuff too. Sorry, I got my dog is jumping all over me. So let me get into the side here. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit different than a lot of other presentations you've seen on ads before. Um, if you're like a lot of people who want to grow their business with ads, um, this probably isn't the first training you've seen. Um, and you've probably found like a lot of the stuff you've seen on Facebook ads, either just not to work or be disappointing or maybe not be the information that you need for a newsletter. This will be different. Um, for a few reasons why, is we're specifically talking about Facebook and TikTok ads for newsletters. That's my past experience. I've done it before at The Hustle. I've helped them acquire over 1 million subscribers with Facebook and TikTok ads. And now I have an agency that helps newsletters uh, grow with Facebook and TikTok ads. I've helped newsletters like The Hustle, The Milk Road, The Daily Upside, ExecSum, Contrarian Thinking, and many more. My agency has about um, 12 clients, and we just focus on helping newsletters grow with Facebook and TikTok ads. Okay, and then also we're just gonna focus on the um, fun stuff. I'm not gonna show you how to like click every button in Ads Manager. I'm not gonna walk through every single boring step about how to set up ads. 
Uh, I'm not going to cover how to set up a pixel. I'm just going to show you the tactics and best practices you need to grow and stuff you wouldn't find anywhere else. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So we'll start with Facebook ads and then we'll get into um, TikTok ads after that. So first thing, so basically there's like seven steps to this that we'll cover today. One is campaign type. One is your landing page or your lead form. Three is your targeting for ad creative. Um, five and six are your UTM tracking and analytics. And seven is like how to manage those ads. Cool. So first off, let me just check the chat if there's any questions about this so far. Cool. Just want to double check that. It's kind of hard to just go without any feedback or audio. So I'm just going to occasionally be going back and forth from the chat. So like if you have questions throughout this, like just put them in there and I will kind of take breaks occasionally to cover that. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So step one is like, what type of campaign should you use on Facebook? And the reason we're starting with Facebook is because I find that to be the better platform. Um, TikTok is a great new platform, but um, if you can get your Facebook ads to work in the way that I'm going to show you, your TikTok ads will work really well too. So we're going to spend most of the time um, in the first half of this on Facebook, and then we'll get into TikTok later. So I'm just going to run through all the steps to set up your Facebook ad campaign. Okay. So Step one, what type of campaign should you run? Um, so for a newsletter, you basically have two options. You're trying to get signups for your newsletter, right? So you have a conversion campaign or a lead gen campaign. Um, if you want to use a conversion campaign, if you have an online course or a paid newsletter, something that happens like after you subscribe to the newsletter, or if you're able to make money in some way after users subscribe, you should probably use a conversion campaign. You should also use a conversion campaign if you have a really good landing page and your landing page conversion rate is 50% or higher, that's a good reason to use one. Uh, and by conversion campaign, I just wanna specify what that means. It's when someone clicks on your ad, visits your landing page and signs up for the newsletter there. A lead gen campaign is when you're using a form in the Facebook or Instagram app to collect that email. And then that form sends that subscriber to your email service provider. So that's the difference between conversion campaign and a lead gen campaign. So you wanna use a lead gen campaign when you don't have an online course or paid newsletter that people are gonna be sent to after they subscribe to your newsletter on your landing page. Um, you'll use a lead gen campaign when you primarily monetize your newsletter through sponsorships, or you just don't have a great landing page yet. Excuse me. So yeah, lead, lead gen campaigns are great for getting the lowest cost subscribers and the lowest cost readers. Conversion campaigns are great for getting low cost subscribers, but then also directing them to your paid newsletter, your online course, or whatever product you have after people subscribe. So you need to pick the right one for your business. I'm sure you can kind of pick and choose based on like the context of your business based on what I shared. For most people, I would recommend setting up a lead gen campaign first because you're just gonna get the lowest cost per subscriber. Okay, so if you're setting up a conversion campaign, a few basic things you need to have set up. One, a custom conversion that fires on your thank you page. So this means when someone signs up for your newsletter, they're redirected to your thank you page a Facebook event fires when they reach that page. That's how you track conversions, of course. And then two, of course, your landing page needs to be good. Um, after this presentation, I'll show these slides and you can click this link to see um, some content I wrote about best practices for landing pages. Um, this should help you double the conversion rate of your landing page, if not, not, at least make it a lot better, um, just based on reading this thread and implementing a few changes that I recommend there. Cool, so if we're doing a lead gen campaign, uh, we need to make a lead form that you'll see on Facebook and Instagram and also TikTok. TikTok has this option too, but we're just going to talk about Facebook now. So we'll also need to connect that lead form to your email service provider. And that's really simple. We're just going to use Zapier to do that. So like I said, I'm not going to cover every single detail of this. Um, like I won't be showing you how to connect Zapier. I just wanted to cover all the steps that you need to have set up before you go live with your ads. Okay, cool. So we want to create a lead form that actually converts people to subscribers. So that means three things basically. And I'll show some examples on um, what this looks like in a second. So your headline in your lead form should have a clear benefit. Just like your landing page, you want your headline to have a clear benefit. You don't want your headline to be um, just a statement about what your newsletter covers or what topic it covers. It needs to have a benefit or it needs to show a way, it needs to show how your newsletter solves a problem for the reader. Um, you also have a subheadline, and that subheadline should probably communicate two or three different things. Um, what type of topics you cover? So if you're covering personal finance or investing or fitness, you're going to mention that, of course. Social proof or authority, like how many people read it. 
Um, you've seen a lot of newsletters use copy like join over 10,000 readers or read by people who work at Google, Facebook, uh, TikTok, et cetera. And then you should also mention that it's free. Um, most people would like, I think most people realize most newsletters are free now, but it's still worth mentioning that will increase your conversion rate on your lead form. And then finally, you need to make a custom image to make sure it looks good. So let me give you some examples of what a lead form looks like. If you've clicked on a Facebook lead ad before, you've probably seen stuff like this. Um, as you see, we have the image, headline, subheadline. This is also the thank you page, which I won't get into right now, but like this is the most important part because this is what people convert based off of. If your headline isn't good, if the image is ugly, they're not going to subscribe. So we need to make sure we get that right by implementing those three elements that I just covered. Cool, here's another example. Um, you'll see like in all the examples of ads that I use, I'm really big on using social proof. So mentioning how many readers you have and like what types of readers they have. So join 175,000 plus investment bankers, investors and VCs. Um, that's gonna help your conversion rate a lot compared to just saying join 175,000 readers. You need to be specific about what type of social proof you have. Cool, any questions? Let's see if there's any questions about that. Um, if you don't have social proof or authority, that's a great question because you're just starting out. There's gonna be a lot of people who are in that situation. So here's what I would do. Um, if you have 100 subscribers, I would mention that. If you have you know, 200 subscribers, I would mention that. If you have, even if you have a few subscribers, some of them may work at a prestigious company. I would try and mention that. Of course, like when you're brand new, you're not gonna have this. So it is gonna take some time to develop and that's okay. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does take time to develop, but like use as much as you possibly can. If you're an expert or an authority on something, you wanna mention that in your ads as well. Okay, so the second part of your Facebook campaign, so we decided what type of campaign we want. We're gonna set up a conversion campaign or a lead gen campaign. Now the second step is setting up your targeting. Um, like who do you actually target with your ads? What budget do you set? All that type of stuff. So let's cover that now. Um, one thing is what budget should you set your ads to? And I recommend between $30, $30 to $50 per day for each ad set. And the reason why is because you need 50 plus conversions per week for ad optimization. And if your CPA is under four or $5, with that daily budget, you'll get 50 plus conversions per week, okay? Um, that's really important because you need those 50 conversions per week to exit the learning phase and um, properly optimize your ads. I'm not gonna get into why all of that works, but it's just important to mention, important that you set your budget at this level. It doesn't, like if your budget is lower than this, you may not get enough conversions for Facebook to actually go out and find you subscribers. And your budget really doesn't need to be higher than that to start with. Um, and by daily budget, we're talking about the budget and the ad set. So of course, if you have a much higher budget, you would probably create more ad sets at $50 a day to test. If you have a lower budget, maybe you only wanna spend $60 per day, maybe you would just create two ad sets. Um, I'll break down what that looks like later, but I just wanna cover all the bases here. Okay, so what locations do you target? What age, gender, et cetera? Locations, of course, is up to you. I usually target US and Canada for most of the newsletters I work with. In most cases, you wanna leave your age very broad and let Facebook find the subscribers that are best for you. Um, even if your age range is very specific, leave it open and Facebook will do a better job with an open age range versus a closed. And then genders do the same thing, leave it open. Languages, you don't really need to worry about specifying what language you wanna target unless you're targeting countries who are not English speaking. Okay, and then placements. This means like, where do people actually see your ad on the Facebook and TikTok platforms? Here's what I recommend or where I recommend placing your ads. Um, it's basically three places. Facebook and Instagram feeds, Instagram Explorer, and Stories. Um, I wouldn't bother testing any of the other placements. They just haven't worked for any of the newsletters that I've worked with. Cool. Um, custom audiences and detailed targeting. So this is where we're actually setting the targeting of who's going to see the ad. Things like lookalike audiences, interests, demographics, et cetera. You've probably all heard these things before. This is where that's actually set up. So you can see custom audiences here and detail targeting here. Um, custom audiences is where you would upload like your email list to create a look like audience or upload your page and um, target based on page engagement. Detail targeting is where you would um, search for different interests or behaviors or job titles and demographics 
people like, you know, who are interested in a certain um, topic, interested in a certain influencer, or like are maybe moving or are pregnant, whatever is relevant for your business, detail targeting is where you are able to target those people. So let's talk about how you actually do that. Um, first step is you're gonna want to exclude your current subscribers in all of your Facebook ads. Um, this might go without saying, but you want to upload a list of your current subscribers to the custom audience section and exclude them. So you don't retarget them and you don't spend your budget on people who are already subscribed, of course. And then for the actual targeting, like what you actually set in those two different um, buckets, I recommend three different types of targeting. This has worked best. So number one is interest, of course. Number two is look like audiences. And number three is age and gender based targeting. So let's break down what that means. Interest. So I like to use the search tool and find different suggestions. So like I know for a newsletter I'm working with, maybe an influencer that's popular in their niche is Brenda Burchard. So I would type in Brenda Burchard, select him, and then use the suggestions tab to find more influencers or audiences or interests that are similar to Brenda Burchard. So this is a great way to get ideas for different um, interests to target. So you wanna search for things like the topics you cover, personal finance, fitness, whatever you cover, other media companies or other publications, Wall Street Journal, CNN, market beat, et cetera. There's many dozens you can target. Um, influences, influencers in your niche. Of course, I just showed that. Um, tools are like software products your readers use. So do they use Salesforce? Do they use HubSpot, Sparkloop, et cetera? Search, search for those, and that might be a good targeting option to use. And then things like events and conferences, et cetera. There's a ton more you can do as well. Okay, so how big should your audience size be? This is really important because you don't want your audience to be too narrow or too broad. Um, both of those are going to cause you problems. Basically, if your audience is too narrow, your ads are going to become very expensive. Your CPM, which means your cost per 1,000 impressions, is going to be very high, and your ads aren't just going to convert well. You're going to have a very high um, CPA or cost per, cost per subscriber. If your ads are too broad, then your click-through rate will be low. The people you target are just not going to be interested in what you actually have to, to say. Um, so you need to be somewhere in the middle. So I recommend something that is more balanced. And that in Facebook is around 10 to 50 million um, in audience size. Um, and if you're a little bit below that, or a little bit above that, it's not a big deal. Um, but somewhere around there is the best practice. And then to get into like what actually works um, for newsletters, the exact interest that I would test are these three types of interest groups or these three types of um, targeting rather. So number one is influencers. If there is a popular influencer in your niche, target them on Facebook, Gary V, Elon Musk, et cetera, whatever your niche is, find influencers in your niche. Other publishers, um, find the most popular publishers in your niche. They might be your competitors like MarketBeat or Vogue or whatever, um, try targeting those. And then the third um, type of audience I would recommend testing is like a broad topic. So whatever category your newsletter is in, if you have a personal finance newsletter, target personal finance. If you have a fitness newsletter, target fitness. Very simple and like very broad, but that interest often will work very, very well. Okay, and then finally, look like audiences. We've all heard of look like audiences. These are really simple to set up. What I would recommend doing is uploading your entire email list and testing that as look like audience. A lot of people go crazy and they start segmenting their email list and they like only want to create a look like audience of their most engaged subscribers. I wouldn't bother doing that. Just upload your entire list, test that and see how it does. Look like audiences are unfortunately not as powerful as they used to be with the the changes, the ATT changes that Apple made. So usually a broad or a large look like audience of your entire list will work best. Okay, and then finally, another um, audience that I recommend testing is age and gender. So if your newsletter is mostly one age or one gender or primarily one age or one gender, test this. So for example, the Milk Road is a crypto newsletter. Most of our audience is men age 25 to 45. So in Facebook, we have ad sets that are targeting men age 25 to 45. That works very well. Those, this is often like our best performing targeting, um, targeting choices is just men in the age range of our, our primary audience. So try that out. I think that will work better than you might expect and it's very simple to set up. Okay, um, so that's how you set up your campaign and your ad sets and ad targeting. Now we're gonna talk about ad creative, which is the more exciting and fun part. But I wanna pause here and look at the chat and see where we're at. Um, let's see here. If there's any questions, you may have to like pop them in again, or Mitch, um, just let me know. But um, 
Yeah, you don't want to spend 900 a month. Are you too early for Facebook ads? Maybe a little bit, but I don't think you need to spend that much. Um, I'm not going to do the math here, but I think you could spend as little as $60 per day on Facebook ads and still see success there. Okay, so the CPA, right? 420, Loki meme. Not exactly. It was just an example, but yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> pause me if you have any questions, Metro, if I should like jump in any. Yeah. On the yeah, no, I mean, th there's a lot of questions that are coming in and we are saving them all. So like there's going to, you know, we can kind of go through them uh, at the end too. But like, this is this is great. I would, it's good to maybe tackle a couple uh, relevant questions to the to what you're talking about um, right now. So yeah, I think this is good. But then we will, you'll probably be circling back to um, some, some questions from this part of the presentation at the end as well. So, but yeah, you keep going. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe we'll, if you want to like, Find some of the top ones and I'll cover at the end. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to jump around too much. That's, that's probably a good idea. But yeah, yeah. I'll try and get to, I, I'll stay as long as we need to to cover everything that, that makes sense. But let me go ahead and wrap up with the ad creative stuff. Okay. Alrighty. So um, basically, if you set up your campaigns like I showed you, um, I know if you're new to this, that's going to be a little bit um, confusing or complicated. But if you follow the steps on Facebook Ad Manager, you'll get that set up. The most important part of this is ad creative. Um, that's, of course, like the ad you actually show on the platform, like if that's not good, people are not going to subscribe. So I want you to spend most of your time and effort on ad creative, not on like getting the campaign set up perfectly. Um, you can figure that out kind of as you go. Um, so first of all, I want to cover like the five different elements of ad creative on Facebook and TikTok is very similar. Instead of five, there's just two. So I'll cover that as well. So the five elements are your primary text, so this is what someone sees. Um, I don't have a great example here, but this is what someone sees like above your Facebook image or below your Instagram in image, your headline. So this is what will show up below your, um, your image on Facebook, your description and your call to action. So this is like the button here on Instagram or the button on Facebook. I think you all know what these look like, but I just like to categorize them so you know what I'm talking about. And then um, one thing you need to do to make ad creative is um, create a swipe file. So this is a collection of ads that you like or great ads. So what I would do is create a folder on your phone or your computer and start taking screenshots of ads. I would start this today um, just as you're scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok on your phone or, or laptop, um, just start saving ads that are good. A, a way to know if an ad is good, of course, if, you, if it appeals to you and you sign up or buy the product, it's probably a good ad. But also if the ad has a ton of engagement, that means likes or comments or shares or views, it's probably a good ad. Like if you see an ad on Instagram and you can see that it has 100,000 plus views, you should save that ad because it's probably working very well. They've probably spent a significant amount of money on that ad to get it to that many views. If it has a thousand likes, it's probably working very well. So keep those in mind as you are creating your swipe file. And then I would also use ad spy tools and sites that have pre-made swipe files for you. So for the checkout are the TikTok Creative Center, the Facebook ad library, swipefile.com and swipe.co. Um, the TikTok Creative Center is basically a library of all the TikTok ads that are on the site and you can filter them by category. So you can start narrowing down um, to find TikTok ads that are similar to like your niche um, or your campaign objective. So you can narrow it by like, you can only look at lead gen ads. So you can find more ads for newsletters or lead gen products, or you can only look at e-commerce ads. So you can get inspiration from advertisers that are similar to you. And then Facebook ad library is very similar to TikTok ad library, but probably better because instead of looking at all ads by category, you can look at ads um, by individual Facebook pages. So you can go and look at Morning Brews ads, the Milk Rose ads, the Hustles ads, look at your competitors, look at other newsletters and see what they're doing and start saving stuff and getting ideas. That's gonna be the, it's gonna be the best way to make great ad creative. Um, so I wanted to give you an example of kind of what a swipe file could look like in eight different ads that you can steal the day and use for your own newsletter. Um, so I'm going to run through those now. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these. Um, what you should do is after this presentation, um, I'll show the slide deck and you can save these ads and kind of take ideas from them to make similar ads for your own newsletter. So there's eight different types here. Okay. One is memes. So there's this great website. Um, called, I don't know how you say this, but imgflip.com. And they have this library of meme templates. And it's just hundreds and hundreds of different memes um, that are left blank. 
you can basically go there and scroll through the pages and find memes that could work for your newsletter or your product. So what I like to do is look for memes that can show a benefit of the newsletter or show how my newsletter solves a problem or show how it's different. So the memes aren't meant to be funny. They're meant to grab attention and show people why they should, should subscribe. So let me show examples of that now. Um, here's three for three different newsletters. So, I mean, it's really simple stuff. It's not super complicated. It's not funny. It might even be like, you might even use the meme in a wrong way. Um, but even if you do, if it drives subscribers, it's worth testing. So like this one, you probably get the idea, like people are moving away from old financial publications and moving towards the Daily Upside, which is a newsletter that I work for. Um, this one from the Milk Road, it's a meme from the office. Um, so it's like the friend who thinks like me who reads the Milk Road for five minutes a day and my friend who thinks I'm a crypto expert. So it's like, I'm not really an expert, but just by reading the Milk Road for a few minutes, I actually learn a ton and I look really smart in front of my friend. So that shows a benefit of reading the Milk Road, right? Pretty simple stuff, um, but both of these, or actually all three of these have worked really well. Um, here's a few more examples. So like this one is just showing how Execsum is different than other financial publications. So it's showing that like Execsum is funny and like interesting and not like dry and boring. It's kind of the format of the meme. Like, and I'm not using these memes in the correct way. I'm using them in a way to generate subscribers for the newsletters. And then this is like, you know, like smart guy, dumb guy, you know, reading Execsum for five minutes is smart. Spending hours reading finance news is, is dumb. So you should read Execsum. And like all of these are kind of silly and like maybe a little crude, but they all work really well to drive subscribers. Okay, this is another really simple one. Like if you have a face to your brand or a founder that you can use in your ads, you need to be using them in your images. Um, a lot of brands just don't do this for whatever reason. Even if you're like just starting the newsletter yourself and you have a hundred or a thousand subscribers, use some images of you in your ad. Um, don't be afraid to show your face. And try and uh, the images don't need to be super high production either. Just like this is an image that Cody might have just posted on her personal Instagram, on her personal Facebook. Like it's not super high production and it worked really well as an ad. Okay, this is an interesting one that you can use right away. A screenshot of the iPhone Notes app, Notion, or a picture of a notepad with copy about your newsletter. So here's examples of that. Um, this is kind of a digital image, but you can actually just like get out a yellow legal pad, write copy about your newsletter and take a screenshot of that or take an image of that. And that will work amazing as an ad. Um, on the right here, this is just a screenshot of iPhone notes. This was a really great ad for us. Um, so super simple stuff. This like, it's like out of the ordinary. So it grabs people's attention and gets them to subscribe. The idea behind the great ads is we don't want it to look like an ad. We want it to look like something organic or something weird that you wouldn't expect. So you actually get someone to read it and then hopefully subscribe afterwards. So that's why things like memes and these screenshots work really well. Here's another one. Okay, this is a really simple one too. Using your top stories or like top headlines as a carousel ad. So like take your top performing stories in your newsletter or on your blog and make those into a carousel ad. So I don't, I can't interact with this now, but if I were to click or like scroll, I could see different top stories from the just newsletter. And then I have some copy below that's a call to action to subscribe. So really simple stuff. Um, if you have stories that incite curiosity, try and use those stories. So people get curious and they subscribe to read the story. Okay. Another really simple angle, testimonial screenshots. So if you have testimonials in your DMS or on Twitter, take a screenshot of them and use them as an ad. Simple stuff that it works really well. Again, if you get like, if you get featured in press or you get an award, take a screenshot of that, use that as an ad. This ad worked really well for the Milk Road. And also like you may need to edit the um, image a little bit. So like it looks good, but if you, if you have the stuff available, um, use it, of course. Um, this is another big one. I know this isn't available to everyone, but authority or social proof. So if your readers work at prestigious companies, um, mention that and like use an image of those logos. Same thing here. I'm mentioning how many readers they have and the, the companies that they work at. These work really well. Okay, so basically the rest of this presentation is about TikTok. And like, if we have time, I wanna get into sharing like my screen and showing how to set up a TikTok campaign. Um, but one thing I should also note is that TikTok video ads also work really well as Facebook ads. If you go look at all the top newsletters like Morning Brew, The Hustle, 
all the newsletters that I work for, you notice that we're using TikTok videos on Facebook and Instagram as ads. And these are often our best performing creatives. So I wanted to share in this presentation, actually like where to find TikTok creators or actors to make a video for your ads, how much to pay them, like how to instruct them, how to add their videos, all that stuff. So you can go out and, and um, find these folks or do it yourself if you're able to film these. Um, let me check in on the chat here. Here we go. Love the notepad example. Yeah, a lot of other brands have used that before I did. So the notepad has been used by Balance a ton. Um, probably used in a lot of other brands. I'll come back to that later. But yeah, the notepad example is big. A lot of other brands use it, but it's still not used as much as you might think. So I wouldn't worry about um, using it again. Um, okay, so let's talk about TikTok videos. This is really important, um, both for your Facebook ads and of course for your TikTok ads, because you need a TikTok video to run a TikTok ad, obviously. Okay, so where to find actors or creators for your TikTok ads? So number one, of course, is on TikTok. Um, use like hashtags in your niche to find people. Obviously, as you're scrolling through TikTok or Reels, if you find a creator that you think can make a great video ad for you, save them, reach out to them. Um, so the hashtags would be like, if you're in marketing, there's like marketing talk hashtag. There's all types of hashtags related to marketing you can look for and find creators in your niche. You wanna find creators who are not super huge. Uh, because we're just asking them to make an ad. We're just buying that video. We're not actually asking them to make an influencer post, which is much more expensive. So I like to find creators who maybe have between 10,000 and like 100,000 followers. Um, because if they're that small, you can probably afford to pay them to make a video. If they have a million followers, their price for a video is going to be very expensive and it's not going to be really worth paying them that much. Make sense? Um, so that's kind of what I look for. Um, a few other places are Fiverr. Fiverr is really great. There's lots of um, people creating TikTok style videos on Fiverr now that are really good. I use this a lot. So what I would search for on Fiverr is like UGC videos, TikTok video ads, Reels video ads. Um, you'll be able to find a lot of TikTok creators who are offering their services on Fiverr and you can buy videos from them. And then there's a few other like websites or marketplaces where you can also find UGC or TikTok style videos. Um, the best ones I have tried are Swipe House, Billio or Billo and trend.io. Okay, so what I like to pay creators per video is like between 80 and 200 bucks. I wouldn't go much higher than that. And I wouldn't go much lower than that either because the, if they're willing to do a video for less than that, it's probably kind of low quality. So somewhere in that price range uh, is what you'll, you'll probably wind up paying for a creator. Sorry, like I said, I'm a little sick, so I might sneeze here. Okay, so like what instructions to give them? I linked a script here, which I'll share now. Um, this is really important because you want the instructions you give them to be very clear. Um, I made a lot of mistakes when I first started um, making TikTok videos for ads is I just didn't give them clear instructions and then they would make a mistake and then I have to make a revision and then it'll wind up costing more or taking more time. So I use this template to give instructions to all the creators that I work with. So. Um, I'm not going to go over this, but you can kind of see and you can kind of put in your own newsletter and your own brand um, to use this template for yourself. Okay, so I'm also not going to cover how to write a TikTok script on this video or on this uh, training. I just don't have enough time. Um, but the way I would approach it is the same way that we approach creating Facebook ads is I would create a swipe, swipe file. So go to your favorite and most popular newsletters in most popular advertisers, look at their Facebook ad library, look at their TikTok creative center and see what TikTok ads are working well for them and get ideas for your script um, from those brands. Um, and then one final thing to note is I would keep your script between like 15 and 30 seconds max. You don't want your video to go longer than that. Uh, if it goes longer than that, it's not gonna work as well. I found that consistently across a lot of accounts that I work with. Um, okay. so. Now we have like, we know where to order our TikTok videos. We know what instructions to give them. Um, we have a decent idea of like how to create a script or at least how to get ideas to create a script. Um, now I wanna mention quickly, like how to actually edit those videos. Um, so there's a few steps here that's not super complicated. You can hire someone on Fiverr or on Upwork to do the editing for you, but I like to list out the steps here. So if you wanna do it yourself, you can do that too. Um, so one is if you're doing just a script style video, someone just like a talking head video, someone talking selfie style or holding the camera or on a tripod, 
um, you're going to be want, you want to, you're going to want to use background music. Um, and if possible, I would use a trending sound as background music. So there's this website called talkboard.com and this basically just shows all of the top trending um, sounds on TikTok. And I think it's updated daily. So you can click on these and find background music that fits the video that you created. And then you can go download this, this, this MP3 and then use that as your background music. Um, I would also add subtitles and text overlays either with the TikTok app or with a video editing tool. The key to making your subtitles uh, look great and convert well as an ad is you want your subtitle text to match the same font as the TikTok's app's text. Um, so if you edit it in the TikTok app, you can use the exact font that TikTok uses. If you use a video editing tool, you can't do that, but Monerstat is a pretty close font to the TikTok native um, like default font. So that's what I would use. And then you wanna spice up your video a little bit. You don't just want someone talking and like that's all that happens. So like you wanna use jump cuts, you wanna zoom in and out. Um, most important, like you wanna add screenshots and videos of your newsletter content. So like whether that's B-roll footage, whether you remove the background and like show your newsletter in the background or show your content in the background, um, use that to spice up the video a little bit. Make it a little bit more entertaining than just someone talking. And then, like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to like, to show you what this looks like without actually showing you. So I would go to the ad library of Morning Brew, TLDR Tech, the Just Sports, the Milk Road, and the other advertisers you think are great at TikTok um, ads or Reels ads, and look at their ad library and get ideas for how to edit the video and like see what they're doing. Um, that's really the best way to learn this. Cool, okay, I have one more slide about TikTok and then I wanna jump into questions. And then if we have time, I can actually kind of jump into TikTok ads and show you how to set up a campaign the way I would do it. Um, so I wanna emphasize um, three final things here. TikTok ads are really rely on great TikTok videos, great ad creative, a lot more than Facebook ads. Um, so what I recommend doing is testing the TikTok videos you're gonna order first on Facebook to see if they work. If they're working well on Facebook, they're driving low, um, low cost subscribers, they'll probably work really well as TikTok ads. If, if they don't work on Facebook at all, you might want to test more videos on Facebook and Instagram before you test them on TikTok, potentially. And then um, the campaign structure, all the campaign setup stuff that I just talked about before this, um, it's very similar to Facebook. So basically TikTok's user interface, they copied it from Facebook. So a lot of the things that I covered in the Facebook section will apply to how to set up your TikTok campaign. Um, and I'll jump into that later if we have time, but I wanna pause now bring Mitch on and like answer a few questions um, and go over that now. So let me jump back here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Yeah, awesome, good stuff. So uh, Matt, if you, on the side there, if you click at the top, there's a, there's a little question mark button and there's a number 17 next to it. That means that Emily has flagged a bunch of, uh, a bunch of people's uh, stuff as questions so that, um, those are kind of saved there on the side. So um, if you scroll down to the bottom of that list, that's the first awesome. question. And it was the, uh, yeah. And so obviously they were asking this in the context of when you were talking about it. So, you know, sorry if it's a little disjointed, um, but <clears throat> what's the average uh, CAC for a newsletter sign up? And that was when you're talking about Facebook. So yeah, in general, what's kind of the, the thing to shoot? For yeah, so that? the average, um... We usually use the term CPA, but it's the same thing. So the average CAC, average CPA for a newsletter that I see for my clients is $2. Um, not everyone's gonna see that though. So I would say between two and $5. I have some clients who are seeing like $1.50. I have some clients who are seeing $3. I think when you're first starting your ads, you should probably shoot for between two and $3 to start with, and then you can kind of start improving the results from there. And then it all depends on like the niche and the context. If you have a B2B newsletter, it's probably gonna be higher because your audience has more niche, right? But that's, that's roughly. And then one thing I, I didn't cover at the beginning, when I say Facebook ads, I'm talking about Instagram ads too. Um, the way they have it set up is you have the Facebook ad platform and that encompasses like Instagram ads, also like audience network, other stuff, but like Facebook means Instagram as well. And then um, a few other questions. What's your opinion mm -hmm. on type form or conversion campaigns versus lead gen? Um, I'm not familiar with type form, so maybe I don't have the full context on that question. 
Um, but it's, it's really like a matter of what's best for your business. And like I said, I would really recommend if you don't have a paid newsletter, you don't have an online course that you're directing to people after they subscribe, use a lead gen campaign. It's just going to give you the lowest cost to start with. Um, conversion campaign, you're probably going to have a higher CPA than a lead gen campaign. So I usually recommend lead gen to start with. Um, and you can always change that later. Like if your lead gen campaign is working well, if you find ad creative, it's working well for your lead gen campaign. Um, you can make a conversion campaign with the same ad creative and it will probably work pretty well. Um, so that's how I think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, what difference yeah. do you see in, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but what different, I'll cover <clears throat> one more here. What difference do you see in lead okay. costs when gating yep. articles, um, versus pure CTA of an email subscriber? That's a really good question. So, um, gating articles means like mm -hmm. someone clicks on an article and they have to enter their email address to subscribe, of course. Um, so the lead gen cost for that is going to be a lot lower and something worth testing. If you have like the ability to do that, or you have content that makes sense to do that. Um, we tested that at the hustle and we saw like a cost per subscriber of like 50 cents. Um, the only downside of getting articles is, is you're going to have much lower quality subscribers because they're subscribing to get access to the article. They're not really subscribing for the newsletter. So the hustle, we saw like a 50 cents per cost per subscriber but their open rate was much, much lower than someone signing up just for the newsletter. So we decided to pause that and just pay more. We paid maybe two or $3 per subscriber. Um, and those people, when they came for the newsletter, they stuck around, they had like maybe double the open rate of a gated article. But um, I wouldn't say, I, I would test that if, if you think that's a possibility, like if you have good content for it, um, but you have to keep in mind the pros and cons of, of both of those. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, anything else, Mitchell, should I? Um, I'd love to cover more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you're good. Um, I, I think you, so several of these questions that you kind of already touched on uh, a little bit. So um, one more here, what's a good conversion rate for the landing page? Good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I question. try and shoot yeah. for 40% um, or higher um, from Facebook ads. Sometimes you'll see a different conversion rate from different traffic sources, right? So like you might have a 50% conversion rate from people who sign up um, like from your social media accounts. You might have a lower conversion rate from somebody who signs up from an ad. Um, so I would recommend trying to get your conversion rate to 40% or higher. Um, and I have a thread in the slides on how to do that, um, but that's what I recommend. So like 40 to 50%, I would say is very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another good question here is uh, the examples that you were showing were newsletters targeting very broad audiences. What additional advice would you give for niche newsletters if there are any? If there's any more specific advice for for that type of an audience? Yeah, I try and target broad audiences whenever possible. It's just going to work better. The Facebook ad platform, it, it used to be different a few years ago, but now they really want you to target broad audiences. You're going to get better results that way. So what I would try and do if you have a niche newsletter, keep your audience targeting broad, but make your ad creative um, very applied to a narrow audience. So use what I would call like dog whistle copy mm. or dog whistle creative. It's like ad copy or images that would only like appeal to your target audience. So you're going to know what that looks like for you. Um, so like you can still target a, a, a narrow audience by making your creative narrow rather than making your targeting narrow. Um, so I would try that out if possible. And then the second thing I would try is like, um, we call it stacking audiences on top of each other. So you have this feature on Facebook where you're able to select the interest, like let's say personal finance, and then you can narrow that further. So it's like personal finance plus fitness plus this. So they have to be interested in all those things to get your ad. So that's the way you can narrow your targeting like to a much smaller niche um, that works well. Yeah. Great. Okay. We got a, this is a good long question here. Uh, so can you just touch on ad set versus ad creative? I understand ad set is the whole configured thing, target, copy, image, placement, et cetera. But for testing purposes, is it advisable to re replicate one ad set and just change the creative? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> so what I recommend doing is using the same creative in all of your ad sets. Um, so I can show an example of that if needed. Um, but basically, so that basically means you're, you're testing only one variable. So you have the same creative niche ad set. And then when you change the, the um, targeting, um, 
you're not changing the variables. You're only changing one variable. So like I'm testing personal finance, then I'm testing a look like audience, and they're all seeing the same ads. If you put different ads in different ad sets, it kind of um, confuses that process and like makes it a little less clean. So that's what I would recommend doing. I can show an example if needed, but I'll just pause there. Um, okay. Any other good ones you've seen? Great. Um, yeah. Do you recommend doing 100% Facebook ads instead of boosted posts? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would avoid boosting posts if possible. Um, basically, you just get less options when you boost a post. Like you're, you're targeting. You don't really have many options. Um, you're going to see way better results from doing ads. And I, I would just totally avoid the boosting post stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is another good question. Uh, is it okay to run ads on Instagram if your newsletter doesn't have an organic Instagram account built up and you don't really have like that presence on Instagram? Does it still make sense to run ads heavily there on Instagram? Yeah, it does. And same thing on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook presence, uh, that doesn't matter for this. Um, you don't even need a mm -hmm. Facebook account. All you have to yeah. have is, or you don't need a face, an Instagram account rather. All you need is a Facebook page to run ads mm. and you can just run ads on Instagram from that Facebook page. So don't worry about that. This can, I've done that many times for newsletters that have no Instagram presence or no Instagram page. It works well. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, let's see here. All right. What other questions do we have? Um, have you ever run ads to build a Facebook page and then convert to subscribers from that page? I haven't. Um, I've heard of some people doing that, but I don't really have any expertise on it. So mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you would be getting yeah. like page likes and then you would be posting stuff and maybe generating business from those posts or like getting subscribers from those posts. I've never tried that. So um, I really don't know. And I think it's like a very, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing because like most people don't think about Facebook as like a growth platform because your pages have such low reach, but maybe there's a way to do it that I don't really know about. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. I think we touched on the key questions. Uh, I think it'd be interesting it, it, since we do still have, you know, 13 minutes uh, till the hour's up. Maybe do, if you do want to walk through that TikTok um, setup process, I think that that sounded like an interesting exercise and probably something that might be somewhat foreign to people. So maybe it'd be good to kind of get a little bit of a walkthrough. On yeah, that. I'd love to do that. Um, let me share my screen here and actually let me pull up a TikTok ad account first. Um, Excuse me. Okay. Um, so the process is very similar. So, sorry again, I got quite a cough. So I'm actually going to pull up Facebook first. So I wanted to show you just um, the three different levels of a Facebook ad campaign. You have your campaigns. So, for example, this is a lead, a lead gen campaign. Um, you have your ad sets. This is where we set the targeting. Um, you can see like different targeting groups we're targeting here. And then finally, we have your ads. So it's these three tabs that we have um, in Facebook. And then TikTok's the same way, which I'll show in a second. So for the people that had questions about what's the difference between an ad set and an ad, this is it. So I'll show you the same thing in TikTok in a second, but um, I'm just gonna walk through how I would start a campaign from scratch in TikTok. And let me zoom in a little bit here so um, people can see everything that's going on. Um, so the process is, is really simple and I can just cover it in, in a few minutes here. So this is what the TikTok ad account looks like. You can see some past campaigns here. Um, very similar to Facebook. So you go to the create button. Um, this is where you select your campaign type. So we talked about conversion campaigns versus lead gen campaigns. Um, also, there's one more step here. We always want to do the custom mode um, when you're creating a campaign. Let's see here. Okay. So now we're going to look at our campaign types. So we have a bunch of different types we can use. But the primary types you're going to use for your newsletter are either lead gen or conversions. So we're going to select lead, lead gen for this example. Um, you can title it whatever you want. You have a few different options here. You can create a split test. You can do campaign budget optimizations. You can set the campaign budget. I would recommend not doing any of these and just doing the default setting. So, oh that name already exists, so I have to put a new name in there. Okay, so now you have what TikTok calls their ad group, 
but the ad group is the exact same thing as an ad set. It's just a different name. Okay. So now we're going to create our ad group. So this is where we set the targeting, the age, the budget, all that stuff. Um, so I'll walk you through how to do that now. So you have a few different options here. Um, you have automated, cre automated um, creative optimization. I always recommend turning this off. I've tested both. And when it's not turned on, things work much better. Um, you have your targeting modes. You have custom targeting and you have automatic targeting. We're going to focus on custom targeting for this. Um, in some cases, it makes sense to use automatic targeting though. Um, just like Facebook, you have your location. So we're just going to do US only. You have your gender. We're going to do all. We're going to do 18 plus. Um, I don't recommend touching the income at all. Um, these are just going to make your ads more expensive. Yeah, there's no really reason to um, change the income. Um, this is where um, TikTok has custom audiences. So if you want to upload a custom audience of your um, email list, I don't have that in this one, but you can exclude that just like you can in Facebook. And then here's um, where you t test the interest in different behaviors um, on TikTok. So what I would recommend doing is a similar process to Facebook where you go into the interest groups and you start searching for interests that are related to your newsletter. So for the Milk Road, this is the account I'm in now, um, it's a crypto newsletter. So we want to find um, crypto related interests. So I'll go to financial services, um, like securities, stock market, that's related to crypto. A lot of, there's a lot of um, carryover between those two niches. Um, that's one. Let's see what else here. Um, we have tech electronics, we have um, education. That's not going to be as relevant. I know there's one more here that's going to be news and entertainment. Um, so news about the business and economy is going to be relevant to people who are interested in crypto. So we'll select that. And I'm just going to leave those two there. So those are like two pretty broad interest groups. As you can see, our audience size is like 30 to 37 million. So we can go ahead and test this as an audience. But if you want to go further and test near audiences, you can start searching for things. So if I search um, crypto, let's see here. I can select crypto trading, um, buy crypto and find more. So like if you want to get more niche, I would just start searching for keywords and finding what's related to your audience and test those as well. Um, Again, the same thing with, with, um, with Facebook and TikTok, you want your audience to be balanced. So I would say between um, 10 to 50 million people, you don't want to be too narrow or too broad. Um, and then I, I like to like organize the audiences just by one thing. So for this ad set, or I like to organize the ad sets by one, by one thing. So for this ad set, I just want to test interest. Um, we talked about testing different demographics and different age groups. I wouldn't do that all in one ad set. I would just do one ad set at a time. So we're just going to do interest for this ad set. Then we'll create another ad set with um, demographics later. But this is like a pretty good start, start here. So if I scroll down, you have the option to select targeting expansion. This is one difference between um, TikTok and Facebook. Facebook has a similar feature. A lot of people find that that feature doesn't work very well on Facebook, but it works a lot better on TikTok. So I normally select this and I expand it based off of interest and behavior. So it does make it even more broad. Um, so it, it's a little bit, I, I would say it's okay to be more broad on TikTok versus Facebook. This is just, I know it's not totally consistent, but it's just what I found that worked best. Um, your daily budget, I would set it between 30 and 50. I'm gonna do 35 for this. Um, your bidding strategy, I always select the lowest cost and that's what I would recommend you do as well. Um, I've tested both, this works best. And yeah, so that's your ad set and your targeting for TikTok, it's really simple. I would go in and like target or name this, like what the interests are that you targeted. And then I would hit next, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so the final step, um, th there's more steps to this, but the, the, the main final step for setting up a, a TikTok campaign is your ad creative. So this is really simple. Um, we're not gonna like write all the script right now, but I'm going to upload um, videos that I've already made from here. So if I go to our ad library, um, I like to test between four to six videos for each TikTok campaign. So these are the ones that I want to test right now. Um, you could do, I, I would say, I usually do it before, between four and six, but if you have more videos, if you have five to 10, um, you can do that too, but more than 10 is definitely not necessary. So I'm going to select those videos to use. Um, I'm going to set an identity to show the ads from. 
Okay, so it says Milk Road, our brand identity. Um, you would also write some body copy here. So um, I like to use social proof in all of these. So I might say like join 150K plus readers free. So I like to mention social proof plus it's free. And then I'm setting our, our call to action, which is um, learn more. I would always recommend setting a standard call to action, like a standard call to action and setting like learn more or sign up. Um, both of those will work well, but I wouldn't worry too much about that part. And then finally, because we're using a lead gen campaign, we select our lead form and you would create your lead form here. Um, so this is what that looks like. And then we hit submit. And that is how, oops, it looks like because um, to actually publish this campaign, I would need to put the text in every single ad. I'm not gonna do that now, actually, um, I might, because I want to show you one more thing here before we sign off. Okay, so we should be able to publish this now because we have um, copy for each ad. Let's see if this works. Um, and then I want to show you one more quick thing about how to create different audiences and target different audiences on TikTok. It's a very similar process to what we do on Facebook. So, okay, so we published that campaign. Um, and now we're going to go back to the default view of ads manager. Um, so I go back and I click the campaign tab. I see the lead gen campaign that I just made. And then, so if I click on it, this takes me to the ad group, which is where I'm targeting, what audience I'm targeting. If I click edit, you can see where we just were and we can see that we're targeting people who are interested in, in crypto business economy, et cetera. So let's say I want to target a different audience using the same ads. It's really simple. I just click copy. I copy this ad group and then I go and I select a new audience. So if you want to select a different interest group, you would do that here. Or in this case, I'm actually going to try automatic targeting, which is a feature that TikTok has that I recommend testing. Um, and this is where basically TikTok decides who to show your ad to. Excuse me. And it actually works really well. Um, so I set my automatic targeting. I set my budget. If you want to change that, I normally keep it the same. And then I click next. And then it has the same ads from the previous ad set. So I just publish those and then I'm done. I just created two different audiences, the test, um, the same four or five different ads. So, um, I know if this is new to you, it's going to look like a lot of buttons, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, I'll pause there. Awesome. <clears throat> That's great stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, we just got a couple minutes left here. Don't want to take too, up too much more of anybody's time, but... Um, but yeah, somebody asks, what's the process to legally use companies' logos for social proof? There is a process. I find unless you like work at a public company, um, most people are not going to care about that. Unless you're a giant company, um, I don't think you're going to get like a cease and desist letter if you're using another logo in an ad. Um, if you like, I don't know the legality behind it, but um, the worst case scenario, is someone might tell you to stop using their logo and you have to pause the ad. Um, but I would, I would just use it. Um, if you're in a big public mm -hmm. company where you have like legal team that approves all of your ad copy, then you may not be able to use that creative, but that's okay. You can still mention they work at Google or Facebook or whatever without using the logo. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, with, for the sake of uh, everybody's time, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, thank you again so much, Matt, for uh, joining us today and sharing those insights. I hope it was really valuable. As uh, Emily has mentioned a couple times in the chat, we're going to be sending this out uh, in the next few days. So um, be on the lookout for that. And hopefully you guys are able to utilize the resources that we've provided you to help with your newsletter growth uh, in a variety of ways. So um, yeah, appreciate your time. Um, Matt, yeah, really, really great stuff. So thank you again. And everybody have a great day. Thanks for having me. Take care. Yep. Bye-bye.